Yeah, because, you know, I've got my looping station going now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Check one. What's, uh, turn off this delay. What's, what's a rapper's favorite East European country? The Mike Czech Republic. Oh. Mike. Mike Czech Republic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. Got my little setup here. Got some instruments so we can do the ohm harmonies. Mm. Oming, like I said, oming is really nice when we can do this chorus or can do these harmonies and it's just very uh it's very rich it's like full body it's it's just very um satisfying for some reason when you hear that and and you know i don't know if how much you know about music theory but it's you know the intervals between notes dame and i we talked about this when we were playing music sometimes like you know uh, for example, you have an octave, like you have your low B and then high B and then higher octave B. But so that's the same note, just a higher octave, like it's uh, twice as, as high of a frequency. Uh, and then when you have a, a major or a minor, the minor would be like, this B and then this B and this B, this B. You know, it's got that kind of um, creepy kind of like um, it, it some, sort of has a morose feeling to it, you know. And then when you start adding in, you know, thirds and fifths and sevenths and ninths, it just becomes like the full gambit. Uh, so it's not. It's, so it could be, you know, happy sounding, it could be sad sounding. And then when you do both, you get this interesting kind of like your mind is just going in all these directions and you're, you know, this integration of the whole human experience and um, becomes very, very interesting. It's I've, I find it very satisfying. It's kind of like, like it's working on all of the chakras is be another way to describe it. But uh, getting close, closer and closer to the thinnest of the veils, the veils continuously thinning. And I want to hear how you guys are doing. Uh, I don't know if you, you feel like tired when, especially, you know, when the sun sets, we got less sunlight. At least it was nice and warm and sunny today. Mm -hmm. But we'll see how you've been experiencing this time and in your life and uh, what you might want to work on. <laughs> we're, we're just about to, to draw from the Ascended Masters, so you can draw one of these. And right. um, yeah, then by the time you get home, you can get into some, some nice healing yin postures and ha definitely have time for our, our meditation. Um, feeling drawn to to do some om meditation today and i have my my sound system with my looper and stuff here so we can get a nice rich harmony of ohms going very uh fundamental very classic to uh some a lot of the ancient forms of yoga because that's you know that's what i do before every class i kind of feel out the the vibe i feel out the the atmosphere and I've been feeling this sort of an increased heaviness and tiredness um, despite having all the nice warm sun that I was enjoying, you know, it's that sun sets this time, which is one of the two best times of day for meditation being sunrise and sunset and that sleepy feeling. If you're able to uh, overcome like, you know, which obviously you have just by showing up the urge to, uh, to like relax or go to sleep or something, you know, take a shower. And, um, then it's ideal for meditation because of that sleepy feeling, because you're naturally 
your mind is wanting to relax. And then if you can, you know, move the body and maintain the postures, you can um, enter into some really healing, uh, slower brainwave states and things. So we'll get into that in a moment and just say when. Right there. Ah, very, very auspicious. You got Lakshmi. It says, flow of prosperity. So I don't know if you've seen any of uh, Sadhguru's recent videos, but there's he's talking a lot about the, the festival of goddesses going on right now. It's called uh, Dasara. So it's, um, you know, in, in India and in, in Hinduism, they, they have like a hundred festivals. It's like almost every day is, you know, most of, uh, <laughs> it's at least like a third of, of the year. It seems like is some sort of festival when you have hundreds and really, I think thousands of, of deities, but right now is one of the biggest ones, Navratri. And, uh, that's part of Dasara. So that's um, nine nights, and it started on October 15th. So beginning uh, today, then. the last day of it, I think, something something like that. Um, and I, I want to say, is it Lakshmi? Yeah, there's days for di- the different goddesses. Um, so yeah, even more uh, auspicious and, and synchronistic here the goddess of love and abundance and beauty with her flowing coins of gold from her hand and all these lotuses, elephants and water symbols of flowing prosperity and love, beauty. So that's a good sign to have with you during this festival of Dasara time. Very good. I think I've had some of that higher than us in the evening yeah and then you don't sleep real well so i started taking melatonin and that's kind of resolved <laughs> good yeah i i've been also taking a little melatonin i i have like a stress relief it's um just sort of a mood boosting blend of 5-htp sam e l tryptophan and uh melatonin that i mostly take at night as you're supposed to take two of them or take maybe one during the day if I like have a lot of energy and mm-hmm. just or something, I last night I was afraid I was going to be wide awake and like not be able to fall asleep during the earlier time. I was trying to go to sleep earlier than the past few days. And um, I was thinking about taking a Benadryl, uh, you know, which knocked me out, but it's better not to. I know that's what Rosemary of, of the mm-hmm. Yale and the Mindfully Well Center, who's also a sleep therapist and a psychologist and she said um you know if you can avoid taking that because it's probably just going to make you more groggy you know but melatonin mm-hmm. is good that's that and l-tryptophan you know is mm-hmm. uh, similar and relaxing so yeah uh, the breathing is one of the things we do here that will mm-hmm. help to get better sleep because that's that's one of the main things that we do during sleep you know the breath pattern automatically changes so when you do your 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 sighing breaths and your long deep breathing um can get your rejuvenation and oxygenation and get better sleep so now there ah we're getting a a theme going here similar to the Lakshmi card, and it's Vishnu. See the similarity? Mm-hmm. They're both arising up out of the water. And uh, so Vishnu, you know you know about Vishnu? I don't remember. So he is one of the three, the Trinity. He's one of the three uh, utmost, like, highest deities. Um Krishna is an incarnation of Vishnu. So Vishnu is actually known as like the ultimate highest creator being. And he created Brahma, who is known as the creator. 
So, you know, of the G-O-D, generating, organizing, destroying, transforming, the uh, generating is Brahma, organizing is Vishnu, and destroying, transforming is Shiva. So, uh, actually, Lakshmi is Vishnu's wife. <laughs> so, Damon's, Damon's goddess of beauty is married to Vishnu. And then when they're, when they're uh, on the earth, if you see Krishna and Radha, it would be, you know, that particular incarnation. Um, and the Buddha is known as an incarnation of Krishna slash Vishnu. Vishnu is the celestial form, not on the earth. But I, when I talked to the, the monk at the Shiva Vishnu temple, uh, he said he would i he was showing me um the deity they have a whole room devoted to the these statues and these deities and i was sitting there meditating for a long time and i asked him you know what that particular form was about and he said it was one of the the earthly incarnations of vishnu that was the most recent one and i i asked you know if if he was still on the earth or or what happened with that and he said Vishnu, this this incarnation, walked into a temple in India and then turned into stone. So that they have the the stone Murti there. Uh, so he he told me about that place and recommended that I go there. But similar to Lakshmi, he's associated with abundance and good fortune. And like I said, uh organizing, like sort of governing, sustaining. Um, but he, you know, people say Brahma is creator, but, you know, Vishnu created Brahma. So it's kind of like the original creator arising from the ocean of milk, uh, where he existed, you know, before anything was created, which you can also sort of associate like the Milky Way. It's that ocean of milk in the universe before the Big Bang. So, interesting stuff. I like it. All right. Uh, Miss Ray, are you there? Ready to uh, check in, draw a card? Yes, thank you. Yeah, any uh, requests or tension today? No, I I really, um, you, my practice with you last week was so helpful, and I I totally feel like you are in tune to what we all need. Yeah, I certainly try to to feel out the uh, the collective consciousness, the vibe, what's what's needed. So that's why I was feeling, you know, this transition into a darker, cooler, like lower energy versus the summer. So uh, we can raise up our our oxygen, our energy, and our uh, uplifting the mood as well. Oh, that sounds good. And uh, say when? Now. All right. All right. So you got one of the Egyptian goddesses, got Isis. Ooh. I've, I've seen people channel Isis on a few occasions. Um, have you ever heard anything about her? Uh, I mean, she, not real. I mean, I mean, she is the common goddess that a lot of people talk about. Bob Dylan wrote about her, right? <laughs> yeah, she's she's pretty popular in uh, New Age, especially like kind of divine feminine circles, because that's kind that's like her thing. Is she was sort of like the original feminist kind of figure. Um, Really, uh, maybe you might think of like Lilith uh, coming from in like the the Christian stories, like the the woman who who stood up for her power um, and uh, kind of fought back against the adversity or or degradation kind of stuff that was going on. Um, she's like a moon goddess, the the uh, counterpart, the the wife of Osiris, being sun god. Uh, so yeah, I don't have the booklet for this deck, so uh, 
you have to take your your uh, personal interpretation of that. My my little that I know about her uh, off the top of my head, but yeah, she was uh, she's very fierce. She's sort of like you might think of like Kali or something from Hinduism. She's that fierce uh, protector of the divine feminine. So. All right, then, if you have a little cushion, if you want to elevate your sitting bones, we will tune in with uh, today. We can just do three vibrations of OM, uh, since we'll be doing OMing and in no particular Kundalini meditation today. Um, give us some Shruti vibration here. Um, and om really should be spelled a u m for ah the sound ah when the mouth is open and then as you gently close the mouth it will go through o and u and m mm. and the way i think of this is these are all sounds of bliss like when we enjoy something, we'll say, ah, so that's the first sound, ah, and then you say, oh, and then, ooh, and, mmm, like when we taste something, we're enjoying something, mmm. So we go through all the sounds of bliss, the sounds of love and peace. And each sound has particular effects and vibrations. So we try to make them equal amounts equal lengths for example if you're sort of counting in your mind maybe three seconds of each one two three like ah two three oh two three ooh and, mm. and it's okay if they're you know a little bit longer for the various sounds but first let's find the sitting bones left sitting bone right sitting bone Finding your center, start to roll the shoulders back. Loosen. When you're ready, let the shoulders sink down. The hands can be relaxed up or down around the knees. And finding your root chakra, your, all your weight resting there. The belly expanding, the heart expanding. It's kind of settling into your body, into this moment with each breath. Practicing that neutral mind towards whatever sensations, even thoughts and emotions, choosing to respond to all of what we experience rather than reacting automatically, just naming, identifying each thing that you're aware of. One more deep inhale. Hold this breath. Exhale. Join the palms and rub. And stillness with the thumbs connecting to the heart chakra. Let's inhale through the nose and sigh it out the mouth. Twice more with full inhales, long sighs with all the breath being released. And for 
some extra stress relief. Let's do three rounds of our cleansing breath where we blow through a little hole in the lips and blow all the breath out slowly in through the nose. time, blowing all the breath out, navel draws in at the end, then breathing through the nose, just observing how you feel. We'll create the vibration of creation the hum of the engine of life within every atom everywhere in the universe. Three sounds, ah, oh, mm. Deep breath in. Deep breath in, hold this breath, keep the eyes at the third eye, no tension in the face or jaw or shoulders as you hold. With your exhale, release the hands, relax. With an inhale, stretch up. Exhale as the hands come down. About three more times with the deepest breath. Let's do one more. And hold with the palms together, stretching tall up and back. Exhale to the third eye and the heart and relax. Let's stretch the legs straight forward, bounce the knees. Palms press down beside the hips. So you have a long, tall spine, heart lifted. And we generally spend about 20 seconds for each of these parts of the body. So feel that area behind the legs as it loosens as you bounce the knees and the toes draw back. And adding in the percussive massage for the hips and legs.
the ribs and organs. A lot of uh, illnesses going around, so we'll get our thymus immune boost, throat chakra, and into the low back. this energy to the facial muscles, up, out, through the eyebrows, forehead, into the temples, ah, I just cleared my sinuses, and jaw, Down the neck. And the, maybe the ears a little bit. Down to the chaps, upper back. And after you get all those muscles, the fingers, hands, and wrists. We haven't done our feet in a little while, so we'll give a little squeeze and stretch to the toes and sole of the foot especially, as well as the heel. That can be very stress relieving and send some healing to all the different parts of the body that are mapped out there. We'll get other foot, stretch the toes and squeeze all through the sole. cracking all my toes when I stretch them in both directions. Okay. I'm gonna let that go and mindfully swing back into tabletop. Like I always say, check your palms flat, fingers spread under the shoulders and roll the elbows to point back towards you, then inhale as you rise, exhale as you round, navel in, pushing through the hands, continue your cat-cow for this minute. Now begin your ohms. Check one, two, Next, inhale, rise and hold, then push through the hands. Exhale, round, draw the navel in. Inhale, back to neutral. 
And let's sit the hips back to the heels. Maybe bring the knees a little wider to make room for your ribs. Nestle the hips down all the way to the heels or between the heels if possible. Arms are long and the forehead rests down. Balasana, child's rest. And take a moment in your prostration here to think about what you're grateful for. If you feel the feeling, the emotion of bowing or prostrating, the humility, bowing the ego of this individual body, mind, ego to the larger super soul self. In the Yoga Sutras, this quality is called Ishvara Pranidhana, devotion, humbling oneself. This is very liberating, really, to let go of that feeling of having to be, having to hold up the whole world, having to be this certain self, and just giving that up and acknowledging there is a higher, larger system that we're a part of. That is the generating, organizing, and transforming, which is also within us. Take our child's rest into a side bend, just walking the hands to the right. And I found I like to have the right hand on top of the left hand, but finding your comfortable little bind. And if you feel that stretch through the left side, then you can just hang out here and Breathe deep into the ribs. We'll add some harmony to our own. Thank mm-hmm. you.
to walk the hands back through center to the left side and in this case I would cross the right hand over well actually I like to have the left hand on top so the right arm that's being stretched can relax a little better and now three minutes here to let the whole body sink, face, jaw, shoulders, and just focus on that breath through the ribs and shoulder. We're doing a little child's pose side bend at the moment, so from your child's pose, you just walk the hands to one side, and for a few minutes we'll be hanging out here with one hand over the other, just breathing to expand the ribs. One of my favorite therapeutic stretches for the spine and the ribs and the shoulder and a little hip opening as well. cycle here and make sure to keep your head down neck relaxed as you walk the hands back to center and as you start to roll up head comes up last and let's lean back rest your hands down behind you behind the hips feet coming flat a couple feet apart start to windshield wiper a 
few times to either side and get our booty massage and kind of working through the range of the hips. A little bit of a twist starts to happen as you kind of turn the torso a little bit to either side. And stretch the legs straight forward for a moment, keeping the hands pressing down beside your hips. We're just bouncing the knees a little bit, toes drawing back towards you. Just keep our legs loose and circulating. And then tucking the legs back into a comfortable cross-legged. I'm going to prop under the sitting bones a little bit and we'll roll the shoulders back in preparation for our neck rolls. We get the shoulders loose down the back, hands just resting on the knees and then chin towards the chest, rolling the head to the right, inhaling back, exhaling down through the chest. Keep everything loose. The heart is lifted, the spine is tall, but the shoulders are loose and the face and jaw are all loose as you circle with the breath guiding you. We'll loosen up our throat chakras for good, strong expression, communication of our truth, good circulation to the brain, Keep our thyroids, everything healthy, and sinuses clear. Next time you come to the chest, reverse to the left, inhaling back, exhaling down. Let the eyes roll back, just enjoy your flow with the breath carrying you, spiraling, loosening the neck muscles, the cervical spine, and getting that nice oxygenated blood for our brains so we can be clear minded, have a good mood, good sleep. It's all about that oxygen to the brain. The next time the right ear comes to the right shoulder, we'll rest there and slide the back of your left hand across your low back, right hand overhead for gentle assistance. Just breathing as these little neck muscles gradually open with each breath. If it feels okay, you can add in a little bit of movement to the chin towards the shoulder, down towards the heart, up towards the sky, 
It's kind of exploring around the range of your chin on this side. And you can get a little more self-massage as well if you like running the fingers down the neck from the skull down the trap. Done with that, we'll just relax the chin straight down. Use the hands behind the head for a little assistance. Other side, left ear to left shoulder. Back of the right hand slides across the low back and the left hand gives you that little gentle pressure overhead. Then if you like to explore the chin up towards the sky, the shoulder, and down to the chest, like a little sort of triangle of the range. Comes twist up, over, and down. Yeah, you can run your fingers down the scalenes. Sometimes having it stretching just opens up, allows these deeper places to be exposed. Squeezing the trap. All right. Coming back to center, shake out the hands. We'll shake off a little stress out of the hands. And draw the soles of your feet together. Baddha Konasana. We'll loosen our hips a bit more. Hands opening the feet like a book, bouncing the butterfly wings, keeping a long, tall spine here. So, if you have a cushion or a bolster, you can bring that over your knees, especially and start to lengthen your spine forward, so not just rounding down, but bringing the heart all the way outwards. And we're gonna to come to rest the body over this support, so that just helps to open the knees. Always wanna rest your head on something so your neck can relax. Finding a spot where you feel the stretch in the hips and also feel kind of relaxed as in nothing is being held up. Those areas that tend to hold tension, emotional tension in the forehead or the jaw, just check that maybe you can soften the face and find that feeling of letting go.
if you want to go deeper, just removing the cushions so you can go deeper down, maybe pressing the elbows to your legs, complete exhales as the navel draws in, get further down. Staying down in your Baddha Konasana, you can also walk the hands out forward along the floor, so you're lengthening the spine. And when you start to roll up, remember to keep the head relaxed down, the head comes up last. And here's a stretch that we rarely do. Uh, we're always neglecting our, our quads, these top of the thigh muscles, so we're going to bring the cushion behind the body. And this starts off in a kneeling kind of posture. You can see, so if you're kneeling, bring your knees apart a bit. Like so. This is where the cushion comes right up until it's touching you. And you start to roll back. Feel this stretching the quads and a nice back bend, opening the heart and the low back especially. And this one isn't always comfortable. Yeah, people do different versions of it. Um, some people like to put some blocks under the cushion and so it's higher up less intense. You can also go wider apart with the knees if it feels like too much. But we're just gonna hang out here. This is called a saddle pose. So as we do with just about every posture in the yin style, just kind of scanning over your body and seeing if anything can loosen. Transition. Go slow. If you kind of walk the hands up, you can start to rise up. Let's stretch those legs out straight forward and bounce the knees a bit. Get the bolster out of the way, loosening the legs. and got space behind you, then you can start to roll back, hug the knees in, and circle the knees. Then reverse your circles. to lower the knees down to the right side. If you want the deeper twist, you tuck that left foot underneath the right leg. 
and I like to keep the closest hand, the right hand on the legs to keep them grounding down. Both shoulders are down and the head goes the opposite way from the legs. So the head would turn left. And we'll have a minute here to kind of like wringing out the body like a towel so we can flush out the toxins and metabolic waste and uh, lactic acid. In this case, we're also kind of emotionally wringing out the liver, getting flushed of anger and things. Um, all of our digestive system is good to give it a good toothpaste tube wringing out uh, anything we want to eliminate from the body. So just a few more breaths, maybe deepening into your twist with the exhales a little bit. When you're ready to transition, just floating the legs back up to center and you can give the knees a hug. Maybe circle or rock around a little bit. For the other side, I'm going to lower the legs to the left. I'm going to go for the deeper version, tucking the right foot underneath the left leg. The left hand grounds them down and head goes to the right. In this minute here, notice the breath, even though the belly is twisted, keeping the breath flowing to the belly so you flush the organs and let the shoulders keep dropping down with the exhales. I think it's time for the poem of the day. Let's see. The year of Hafiz, October 24th. Ah, oh, this is a very brief poem of two sentences. It is called, Is Not the Treasure? And Hafiz said, When love is there, is not the treasure? When it is not, who could blame a face that looks sad? Love, the great wealth, the treasure. We say our health is our greatest wealth, and our health is a result of self-love and others' love. It's creating this well-being. So, at this point, you can start to float the legs back up. Give them one more hug. And if you can interlace the fingers together outside the knees, you get that little bind. And then we'll rock and roll all the way up and back and get some back massage. Like we do in Kundalini, we usually inhale up and exhale back. Can be difficult to to uh, breathe when the body is rocking, so that makes it easier when you roll back. Just the body wants to release the air. When you're done 
with your rack and unrolling, you can just roll up to cross-legged. Okay, so these are our basic uh, types of stretches we've done. Forward folding, leg stretching, side bending, hip opening, twists. Um, let's do one more shoulder opener. Uh, let's do it a little bit deeper than we, than we did with our child's pose. So I'm going to tuck the left hand behind the head, walk the right arm out until you feel this opening in the left shoulder and ribs. And the deeper you breathe, the more you'll feel that. And we're also rolling this left elbow up towards the sky in line with the body. Maybe a, maybe a couple more breaths here. up, other side, right hand behind the neck, left arm walks out, and that right shoulder is rolling open, the elbow up towards the sky. If you feel your hip start to pop up, grounding that sitting bone down, just feel that breath sending the expansion of the breath to loosen up any anywhere that might feel a little tight. Feel this this side wants a little bit more stretch, so I'm gonna give the body what it wants. I'm gonna take the right hand, grab onto the left wrist, stretch it up and to the right. So I'm pulling this left arm to the right, just for a little deeper kind of distraction, really opening up that kind of see what you would call this the uh, rhomboids into the delts into the upper back kind of back of the shoulder blade muscles so I might go a little deeper with this last breath and then rising up switching the grip left hand can grab the right wrist and draw it to your left Similar to the previous stretch, we want this, all the arms in line with the rest of the torso. So you're kind of rolling back towards the sky. Goodness gracious, take this last breath with an inhale, stretch up and shake those hands out, shake off anything you don't need from the body, from the energetic field. All right, and then relax, palms face up, first finger and thumb joined in Gyan Mudra on the knees. 
Let the shoulders sink down, keeping the heart lifted. Feel your weight resting into the sitting bones, grounding the breath flowing deep into the low belly, filling up like a balloon. And we'll do a little ujjayi, the breathing, the ocean breath or victory breath that's kind of constricting the back of the throat so that it's like a sigh, like that, ah, but through your nose on the inhale as well as the exhale, Darth Vader breath. You can hear that breath in your throat. There's a few breaths like this. We're going to calm that vagus nerve in the throat, calm the heart, calm the entire nervous system and shift into a deep healing parasympathetic mode here. So with the, with the eyes closed, they're rolling up to the third eye between the eyebrows. With that soft, still gaze to relax the forehead and jaw. When your face is very relaxed, our brains associate that with a relaxed mood and we'll start to respond accordingly with the endorphins. So we're choosing a calm and peaceful state, santosh, a contentment. Couple more breaths, see if you can relax even deeper. Feel that breath in the throat, ujjayi. be here in this posture for meditation on the vibration of creation ah, oh, ooh, mm, which also symbolize different states of consciousness the symbol for om that looks like a number three with a curly q is three arcs which represent conscious mental state, unconscious, dreamless sleep, and super consciousness with the crescent moon shape, which is the mind sort of separating the states of consciousness from the higher consciousness, the being in the body, being in maya, to towards turiya and samadhi so beautiful vibration we'll get some more of that vagus nerve stimulation uh, so the deeper breath you get through the belly and the heart and the more vibration you give it the greater benefits the greater healing and stimulation to that vagus nerve to the heart to the throat it creates this nitric oxide um, a lot of good benefits here, so long ah, uh, oh, ooh, and mmm, ideally of uh, equal amounts. And we'll get some harmonizing of our own going. So keep your weight grounded back into the sitting bones, heart lifted, and start to fill up the belly and the heart. Oh.
One more time. Deepest breath in. Fill up the belly through the heart. Deep breath in. Hold this breath. No tension in the face, just holding complete relaxed stillness. When you need to exhale, just breathing naturally, meditate, observe the subtle vibrations, the resonance within you. remaining in your meditation, just mindfully coming down into legs up the wall, or you can just lie flat in Shavasana if you like. You can support as you like, and if you want that extra leg stretch, then you can do legs up the wall, but get comfortable and wherever you are, Roll these shoulders all the way underneath the body and let the palms face up about a foot away from your body. Let your eyes roll back and float in a comfortable place. The forehead and jaw soft as you can. Let those shoulders sink down down through the arms and fingers, softening. And the head and neck are heavy, down through the torso, the belly especially, that can sometimes be tense. And all through the hips, legs, and ankles flapping open. This is your time now, so you can set a little intention if you like, but just being completely relaxed and still will bring you great healing, but also choosing that in your mind and saying, I will completely heal and rejuvenate and de-stress, be complete, relaxed contentment now.
Keep relaxing, but as you deepen your breath, feel that breath receiving that breath and receiving energy with gratitude on the breath. The oxygen molecules that have been breathed by our ancestors, by ancient people, plants, animals, through all time, and receiving healing, giving yourself self-love and a pat on the back for showing up and evolving in your practice, in your intentions, 
whatever they may be, bringing yourself more peace, well-being, and health, such that you can be a greater force of radiant peace and love to heal those around you so they can go on to bring more peace to everyone around them and that ripples out into the world. So deepening your breath with your self-love and gratitude coming in and moving the fingers, wrists, and feet. Or you can rub your palms together and rub your feet together if you can to get the body flowing. And if you can, rock forwards and back along your back a few times, or you can just roll to your side if you prefer. But eventually, when you're ready, we'll roll up to seated. And draw the palms together. To the heart center. And the, the message, the the lesson, the teaching today that has been repeating in my mind over and over that I must share with you is simply how can we bring more love into our lives to others? And we know we get what we give. So this is your homework and challenge I put before you tell everyone in your life that you love them and show them how can you create more love giving gifts giving compliments giving a loving smile or touch and here we'll create that from the heart with the sound om shanti 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 sending out our peace, our compassion to all beings. The deep breath in. same super soul as each of you and that's why we say this light within me recognizes and sees and honors that within you in other words namaste namaste, namaste. You know, they say that I do subscribe to this belief as well, that everything that we experience, every thought, which is the motivation for every act, action that we take, everything boils down to love or fear. And everything is because of love. So it's either an act to give 
or request or receive love or even when people are you know acting out in, in violence and anger that is an expression of calling out for love feeling like they don't like they aren't loved or they aren't uh, feeling the love in that situation so that's why they're acting out in order to achieve it so everything that's the motivation for everything and fear is not it doesn't really exist it's like uh like darkness how darkness doesn't really exist it's just the lack of light but light is a real phenomenon a real thing that exists like you can't create more darkness you can't you know like increase darkness but you can increase light so that's why light is truth and love and we can increase that we can experience that and so just something to consider when you're observing your your thoughts and actions as to is it from love is it from fear which is not seeing love and how you can bring more love into it that's your homework so take that into your night and your day tomorrow and let me know how that goes